Hello and welcome to the show. For this week's versus the community, we were going racing with the Sierra Cosworth, or some Sierra Cosworth, some fitted with turbo rally engines, much like mine. It may have even been a couple of V8-powered ones. However, we were racing with B-Class Sierras, our first race at the Sonoma Short Lounge. A little bit of bumping through and so on. It's actually a notoriously dangerous turn one at uh, this track, and only one car getting sort of tipped sideways. It's pretty good going. I get very sideways at the top of the hill as there's a bit of rally cross going on with the exit and curbs were playing a nuisance with some of these cars and if you got things wrong with them they could be very sideways indeed the light blue car getting himself all crossed up on the exit and getting absolutely mugged by everyone of course while everybody is so close together at this stage of the race very easy to get swamped and if you're sideways in front of the pack of cars there's a chance somebody's if they don't collect you is going to give you a little bit of a nudge and uh, yeah Plenty of busyness. However, amazingly, most cars making it through. Again, a little bit more rally cross from the vehicles up ahead. This is a very, very fast part of the track, and there are a lot of vehicles trying to go too wide through these corners. Sonoma is a more difficult track to overtake on. Just the nature of the circuit. A lot of medium speed corners with not a huge amount of braking zone into this final turn is one of your best bets. A red car comes from a long way back. Can't quite get it stopped in time and doesn't get the pass done. Again, there's a little bit more of touring car contact going on further back. I had had a relatively nice uh, starting position on the grid, was up in third place, trying to make away past the other uh, car ahead of me, as uh, I carry a lot of speed out of these S's. There's nowhere really to go. You can, if you're really brave, sneak up the inside, but this is a brilliantly fast corner. It's a great turn, very difficult to get an overtake done. I settle for ducking back into line initially, have a big dive up the inside in to the final turn, get my car stopped, park it on the apex as further back, there's more fighting going on, and uh, yeah, try and block off the black car. It would move me up into second, unfortunately, a small bump and then a dodgy Forza crash detection would completely ruin my race and I'd be out uh, a lap later with like 100% damage on everything. I don't know what went on with, uh, with my car. Sonoma, though, was proving to be quite an excellent race. While the fields did sort of start to spread out, it kind of ended up with lots of groups of three or four cars fighting for position as uh, this lot are squabbling the white and blue car looking for a way past the other ready orange vehicle. You can sometimes make around the outside pass work at the final hairpin. You can often get a very, very quick exit and out drag the car towards the line. In this case, though, not quite as we come up towards turn one, turn two. is a little bit too far back, tries to have a sniff up the inside. Will draw alongside, but takes touch as tight line. Can't get any speed out of the turn. As I said, the field very much split up into these little groups of battling cars. It wasn't one large train, but uh, it meant that most people had somebody to race against, and really that's the most important thing when it comes to events like this. The uh, red and white car trying to fend off the uh, rather distinctively colored purple car. Purple car actually gets the position briefly through these very, very fast corners. It's a good move to uh, get alongside, but doesn't quite have the speed to make the pass stick. And in that little exchange, just running through that section, they've brought the black and red car up into contention and he's having a big sniff into the final hairpin has to go the long way round there's a the tiniest of tags between them someone gets into trouble behind a very another very very side there were lots of sideways uh, sierras also another off what to say at the start the cars had to be kept rear wheel drive so there was plenty of sideways uh, sierra action going on and another group of three cars fighting for position and as these groups kind of stayed together for large portions of the race they'd be so busy fighting you know each other you'd end up dropping off the tail of, of the group ahead of you and so on but if the group behind was fighting even more you find yourself very much in a, in a no man's land it's a big big dive from the dark blue car can't quite get it stopped because it stopped in time to make the corner but can't really get it stopped As that wider that wider line you do tend to get a very very quick exit you kind of straighten the car up and get on the power earlier uh, out there so the blue car does have a, a good run the dark blue car does have a good run down towards the first corner but it's just that little bit too far back and in fact quite sideways this time around <laughs> through the first corner to really find a way past and up ahead the uh, the rusted car had been uh, a little bit out of shape through that opening turn as well so yeah group stayed together fighting for uh, quite some time at the front uh, there was a little bit of rally cross from the <laughs> leader on the final lap 
Uh, the leader had managed to pull away early on, was starting to get caught towards the end. In fact, you can only just about see third place uh, coming into the hairpin. Now, we're starting to get caught in the closing stages of the race by the uh, White Sierra, but uh, they ran out of time to, uh, to do very much. They were quite a long way ahead of the rest of the field. I don't think, even if I hadn't had a slightly glitchy crash that killed my car, I don't think I had the speed to keep up with the Elite 2 in that one. Our second race, and we would head to the Brands Hatch GP circuit. I actually had a couple of cars uh, stall on the grid, not get away well at all. Thankfully, everybody made it through without too much uh, chaos off the start line initially, that was. Someone's always bound to end up in the sand on the outside of turn one, and the curbs around this track proved deadly. There, they can often be a little bit of a problem. Didn't realise how much problems we were going to have with the Sierra's car on the outside. Gets tipped sideways, then pings off the door when they're going three wide through there. Does cause a little bit of mayhem behind. Everyone had a really good job of not having a much larger accident in that instance. When the car in about fourth or fourth or fifth place spins in front of the pack, it uh, can go quite badly wrong. I think a couple of cars did get collected, but uh, yeah. The, <laughs> the curbs are vicious. The curves are vicious here. I didn't expect the Sierras to have so much of a problem as they saw Wise and Blue Car would uh, lose out. Just not quite got the momentum going on to this back straight and uh, would would drop down a position. Yeah, often with the very, very small, very light cars. Yeah, the curves here are horrible. But with these, these Sierras, they were having uh, no end of problems as uh, the black and orange car would uh, get past the, the white car we're following. Tried to sneak up the inside, couldn't quite get a move done. I found myself starting quite a long way down the order, so plenty of overtaking, plenty of cars to try and find a way past for my Sierra. And Turbo Rally Sierra I was driving was working very, very well here at Brands Hatch to dive up the inside into the final corner. And I have the power, I have the torque, the acceleration out of this last turn to get the move done. And uh, it actually propels me up alongside the car ahead as well. Great, great straight line speed from my vehicle and still plenty of hand in the dark blue car. Tried to go around the outside and ran out of grip. One of the big dangers, you try to run around the outside of turn one, one of the big dangers ending up in the sand out there. Unlike at uh, Sonoma where we tended to break off into trios, this time there was uh, some much larger groups going on. This is a big angry pack of cars fighting for position. The vehicle we're following at the moment got trapped on the inside, actually had to take such a tight line, was very, very slow off the corner, got absolutely mugged by everyone. There's now a silver car in you know, a couple of quarters. Silver car has joined right up into this group. But you know, when a group of this many cars are fighting this closely together, you really just end up slowing everybody down. <laughs> you keep slowing each other down. Maybe one car at the front will escape. It would <laughs> two by two through the next quarter. Uh, one car at the front of the train will escape, but as the, you know, as, as the group is still slowing each other down, cars behind will catch up and joining the fight, and it just kind of keeps going and keeps going as we now <laughs> head into this final quarter up ahead. There's still some swapping of positions that are blue car uh, now joining in the fun as well. And, you know, th that's what I love about this, this kind of racing, racing these sort of these B-class cars. The Sierras were really good fun, considering we haven't been on Forza 6 for a little bit while. People might not have you know, raced on Forza 6 so much uh, over the last few months, so we jumped straight back in with this kind of car. And we have some incredible racing. This was the fight for the lead. The, the purpley blue car at the front had been gradually caught as the race progresses, was trying to uh, defend. I was making a move up into third place in the background as well. Yeah, the purple car was clinging on, clinging on to the lead as much as he could, but runs just a tad wide. He's a little slow off the corner, and that is uh, all the invitation. Second place needs the car up the inside. Keep the purple car or out wide through the next quarter, or just block the inside so he can't do a cutback, and uh, that will move him up into the lead, although a little bit of a scary moment there across the uh, across the cup. As I said, uh, you know, Brands Hatch, again, much like Sonoma, isn't the easiest of tracks to overtake on. Turn two is probably your best bet, and the rest of the corners tend to be pretty damn fast without a huge amount of, uh, of a braking zone, so you've really got to, if the car, car you're racing with doesn't make a mistake, you've really got to make a very, very clean move, which uh, <laughs> these two were having some fun with, going too wide around some of the faster corners on the track. The red vehicle desperately trying to cling on to a position in the end just gets hung out a little bit too wide and can't do much to hold off the uh, crazy purple vehicle. This would uh, be the battle still raging further back. They <laughs> were still arguing and, you know, they were fighting for, I think, the lower parts of the top ten. 
Although mistakes were starting to creep in, car up ahead ran a wheel across the curb. Everyone scatters. These three do an absolutely incredible job of avoiding the car up ahead. I said, curbs are vicious. You run one of the rear wheels across the curb and it will tip your car sideways if you aren't careful. And at the position, the other black car up ahead hit the curb. There's nothing you can do. You're a complete passenger at the speed that you are taking that section, uh, smacking off the wall. But yeah, these guys can continue their uh, little fight for, uh, for position now, a couple of positions higher. Third place, no, fourth place, sorry, was uh, now up for contention with uh, Purple Guard coming under increasing the fire from vehicles around. It's the white and blue car going for the spectacular outside pass. When I first saw this clip, I thought there was no way he would make that uh, overtake work, but he did, sweeping around the outside. It's an absolutely fantastic, fantastic pass, the yellow and uh, purple car trying to sneak up the inside couldn't quite make it stick and now this white and blue car can escape with the vehicles behind now locked in battle you can go and make that little bit of headway a uh, little bit of clean air uh, run away while they fight while they slow each other down I mean, there's another car i think it's a greeny color car that's now coming to join in that fight behind so yeah got to make the most of the opportunities when you get clear of a battle at the front the leader had made a mistake and run wide allowing me to catch right up behind him and we were very very evenly matched in pace around here. I had a little bit more acceleration, a little bit more handling. The black car had a bit more top speed than I did as we round the uh, final corner. I could catch him initially, then it just start putting away down this start finish straight. But I could carry a little bit more speed through the corners. And this is as we headed on to the final lap. I knew my best shot was going to be have a dive into turn two. He realizes that as well. Covers the inside, forcing me to have to try and go the long way around. I carried great speed around this corner. Go to the outside and I bounce across the curb. It's a huge sideways moment for the orange Ford. I catch it. In all of that, I managed to prevent it from going spinning around or from clattering into a tyre bundle. But uh, yeah, turbo rally engine and a nasty curb, not necessarily the best of combinations. And any chance I have of uh, catching the leader is long, long gone. So it would be the uh, black car that would go on to take victory. Yeah, quite a lot of... I certainly did a lot of overtaking here at uh, <laughs> Brands Hatch. There was certainly plenty of... Plenty going on in this one. Us two were quite a bit faster than the rest of the field. Our cars, you know, just suiting that particular track. Our final race, we would go to the Yas Marina South Circuit. A track, I quite like this layout of Yas Marina. Probably my favourite of all of the uh, the shortened Yas layouts. Three wide into turn one, though, is a little bit on the scary side through here. This poor rusted car had to, had to have a lift and then get swamped by everything. There was a little bit of uh, shenanigans going further back. I got stuck on the outside. I didn't actually get my car damaged in any, but I just got stuck on the outside trying to avoid uh, a little. I think someone missed their braking point, as is quite easy to do and uh, unfortunately quite common here. At, uh, at, yeah, so a little further back was some, uh, was some chaos at the front. We were going too wide through these very, very fast. Trying to make it three wide through some of these fast corners. Yeah, you don't really want to be sniffing up the inside through there. There is again some more touring car contact going on and another curb getting a car incredibly, incredibly sideways. Through it. Just, I don't know what it is with these Sierras. And it was different cars having different, you know, different problems at different corners. It was just, yeah, apparently the Sierras and curbs did uh, not get on particularly well. Still plenty of vehicles going too wide here. The white car wanting to have a dive up the inside into the final turn. As I said, I had once more got a lot of work to do in trying to work my way through at the field. My car not having the greatest of, uh, of top speed made it a little bit more difficult for me. We're <laughs> going so many cars in a tiny piece of road. A little a little bit scary. Again, getting stuck on the outside. I can't really, can't really go anywhere else in that instance because there's just three cars wide ahead of me. Get that good initial drive out of the final turn. And I would get past the black and red car. As I said, I'm lacking slightly the top speed of some of the other vehicles. I make up for it with some pretty damn good braking. It's to the outside of turn one. The hope to be able to sweep past the car you're alongside. I couldn't get it done, though, through that section. You have to settle for running in behind it through quite a narrow uh, turn one and turn two. The black and red car made a mistake on the exit of that chicane. He would get hung out to dry. Uh, I, I run the risk of bobbling across the curb. We do get away with it. Now it's three wide into one. That's, that's not a corner you go three wide into. That, that is probably the fastest corner on the track. One of the most challenging corners on the track. Thankfully, the car on the inside did back out of that one uh, rather than making a really, really big accident. Because, uh, yeah, two wide is scary enough as it is. 
three wide in what are quite oversteery cars at the best of times perhaps wouldn't have ended well. And this racing was excellent fun. This racing was a huge amount of fun. Not so good for me actually getting through the field and making it up towards the front, but entertaining to, <laughs> to go race with. Again, and that's the most important part. Once more, we have another group of vehicles trying to go <laughs> three wide through that uh, incredibly fast quarter up ahead, second and third, uh, having a good old battle of their own as well. There was an awful lot going on here at Yas Marina. You could look at just about any point on the track and there were cars fighting two and three wide through most corners. That's under the hotel going three wide. Again, some more touring car contact at uh, that point in the uh, in the race, but uh, we're still we're still three wide. We see there is a little bit of a bump between the cars as they all get fired into the final corner. Everyone struggling to uh, get stopped. And then we have the drag race down the start finish road actually a little bit of a, a tough track in some respects to uh, build a car there's a fair few slow corners around here but then there is this very very long start finish road and the rusted sierra would uh, just about manage to break his way free at the front of the group as i said you know most most important thing really when it comes to whatever you might be racing is that uh, yeah, you've got cars. You've got cars around you to fight for positions. It didn't matter whether the positions were second, third, and fourth, or whether they were down in the tenth or even you know sixteenth place. You were fighting. You were fighting tooth and nail for absolutely every place. Again, this is for the lower end of the top ten, and with three wide once more down the start finish straight towards turn one. The black and red car having the superior straight line speed, but you know the compromise you make with the PI is going to be a handful when it gets to these slower corners. As as, uh, everyone is uh, just about trying to fit their way through the opening opening sections. The uh, purple car gets uh, a little bit of a hip bump from the uh, the red vehicle. Although as the red car runs wide out of the next corner, we're going to go side by side again. And this all you know plays into the hands of the car at the front of this group. He's just got that little bit of clean air and isn't having to worry about being immediately passed. Just still the cars behind continue to swap positions and swap paint there probably wouldn't be much of the car's original paint on it uh, let's be honest by at this stage of the race and still you know every quarter they're trying to get a cutback on each other they're now both caught right back up to the black vehicle i was still locked in battle with just about every single car that uh, that i came across i kind of worked my way up into i think it's around sixth place at uh, this stage sixth seventh place at this stage of the race was having an awful awful lot of fun though trying to fend off from the uh, the white and orange car. I think he, he, I don't know if he hit a curb or if he got a slight nudge. He got turned anyway relatively early on, dropped back, and then me and him kind of worked our way up through the order together. I get a big oversteer moment, managed to catch it, but I'm all sorts of wonky through his high-speed quarters. Still on the inside, though. Still trying to do my very best to defend the position. At the end of the day, though, I couldn't quite hold on to it. The uh, great orange car managing to get to the inside, managing to sort of lock me out of that place. And, you know, just that little exchange between us going too wide through a couple of quarters. You can see the fight going on behind us had allowed the green, greeny, bluey coloured car to catch back up to us. It was, yeah, <laughs> all sorts, all sorts of busy. At the front, though, it was much calmer for the the white sierra that would drive off got the lead relatively early on and could just drive away from the field again fastest lap times weren't uh, huge amounts in it between a variety of vehicles but being at the front and being able to run in clean air I mean, you kind of can see second place uh, further behind being able to run in clean air not getting stuck in battles for four or five laps is uh, certainly certainly very very helpful yeah, these were, well, as you could imagine, a Sierra Cosworth or a Sierra Turbo Rally or the odd Sierra V8 were a lot of a lot of fun, a lot of fun to uh, go racing with. For the first time back on, on Forza 6 for, for a little while, it was actually a lot of quite clean racing. Yeah, there was some touring car contact at uh, times, a few cars uh, falling foul of the curbs as well. However, on the most part, yeah, a lot of, a lot of really rather, rather good racing. However, that is going to be it for this week's Fair Race versus the Community. The next one shall be held on Thursday, the 5th of January. We're going to be back on Forza Horizon 3, going racing with A-Class Pickups slash Utes. So if you'd like to take part in that event, you can sign up via our forums. There'll be a link in the description. Find the Fair Race versus the Community section, and you can sign up in there. That's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.